people who know him was beer aficionados, but you were selling a whole lot of that beer that evening. Yeah. To people that weren't beer freaks, but they were all enjoying that beer. So. Yeah. And this has uh, changed on the uh, next uh, glass that I, I have of the same beer. It's, okay, it's so changed with temperature. Well, I, I, I want I put the initial glass. Uh, Chris, are we Chris killing is, you here? Chris is losing it. Chris is losing it. He tried to he tried to breathe beer. Okay, so the the first couple <laughs> pours were were uh, a cold pour, yeah. and this last bottle I had left out. And uh, so this is like a warmer version of it. This mm-hmm. is room temperature. I would say a little bit wow. below Key West room temperature. So yeah. it's about 63 or to 71 right. now, degrees. This, this beer we bought as a four-pack. We also bought a six-pack of another of the two other beers we're going to have, and it has two more of these in there. Yes. So we still have more of these to drink yeah. before we get to the others. Now, it's a it's a dark brown Amber, dark yeah, amber it's, beer. It's, they call it in uh, if you look the, in the Flemish or Dutch, uh, they call it Old Brun, which yeah. is uh, Old Brown. Yes, Old Brown. It has a nice head. Yeah, it, it's very That's it keeps it. Said. Now, now. <laughs> what? Now, now, now. You're letting the drugs now, get now. to you, Gary. What? 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 Huh? That's what she. What? Yeah. What? What? Hey. That's not what I heard. Zip it. Zip it good. Zip it good. No, it's a very. <laughs> no, it's just you know what I, I like. I kind of like this beer. So you're not um, so disappointed. In spite, yeah, in spite of you know, it's just like it's growing on me. I think this is a pretty good one. Again, that's what. Yeah, you're I'm really, stop. I'm really happy with this. Beer. Yeah, it's waking up the taste buds. <laughs> it's a good buds. thing you're it's way really... over there, and I'm way over here because I'd be smacking you. I'm Kevin Mark, and you're listening to Key West Beer Tales, the sum of all beers. Now, one of the things that's a little prohibitive. Of this beer is he said, that, that's what he said <laughs> is that it's a little on the expensive side and i believe we're dealing with what's the size of the bottle mark i think it's less than a third a third uh, of a liter it's 11 two okay so that's a third of a liter okay yeah i, I just thought it was a smaller bottle okay okay so it but just, it's they're, they're expensive i think yeah. i forget what the price of that's of the four pack was but i'm thinking it was in the range of 16 dollars for four beers okay so um Back about eight years ago, this would the, a four pack of this would have been about twenty two dollars in New York City, mm. which um, New York City prices translate directly to Key West prices. So that that means that the demand has gone up and the supply has gone up as well. Yeah. Uh, so the price has gone down okay. as a result of that, right. which is interesting. It's very you know, interesting. Here, here's an interesting question. Going back to what Dave Senior was saying just a little while ago, Dave, you were saying that. You know, you're 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 hearing more and more trends of uh, sour beers sour becoming beers. more popular. Um, is it something that you're looking at to to keep, you know, one or one or two on the shelf? Uh, if it's as a pub owner, if Mark has his way, yeah, he, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. If I'm my way, I mean, we're, we're going to do a whole row. <laughs> he, so this isn't some kind of fad. No, I don't think so well, uh, because I keep hearing it more and more. So on, yeah, honestly. So I, I don't mean to cut anyone off, but you brought up the word fad. Um, so about. Uh, Eight years ago in New York, uh, I heard about, like, sour beers. And, like, you know, I started learning about Cantillons and stuff like that. And, like, these beers that were uh, beyond the American profile and um, flavor profile. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and like, I, I, I was like, no one's going to like these beers. I don't even like these beers. I never had actually had had one, but I had a past judgment. I was like, this is all bullshit. And so here we are ten years later talking about sour beers in Key West, Florida. Uh, the toehold that sour beers once had in the you know great state of New York um, has actually moved on to being uh, beers no longer g- single singly made in Europe that are sour. Now there are beers here in the United States that are sour beers. I, I think it's gone beyond the fad. I think it's gone beyond the novelty, where it's like uh, it, it actually you know it's become a thing that people seek out. Um, and and that's, I think, a really interesting change in the development of the American profile of beers because so that's, we're going beyond the over hops, and now we're going into the Americans like per, trying attempting to perfect the old world style where they're like it's not a hopped sour right yeah I, I mean like it's like people are genuinely seeking out original recipes and like trying to. Clone Dupl- that, yeah, duplicate them, yeah. 
um, you know, so I think that's a very interesting thing. And honestly, yeah, Dave, if it was up to me, we'd have a whole row of, of sours. Well, huh. yeah, but, you know, when you think about it, and I, I heard a guy, um, and I, I apologize, I don't know his status with Sam Adams, but Sam Adams uh, says they uh, they cannot create a spring beer uh, that that in, that uh, the public really really takes a hold of and enjoys, and he feels that no one uh, and he feels that they've done a worse job than most brewers. But uh, no brewer has been able to attack that market of spring beers, mm. and so maybe the sours need to be that spring beer. Maybe, but. So, for me, okay, now, I, I, again, I don't mean to cut you off, but uh, uh, for me, the warm room temperature sour, there's a lot of vanilla notes, there's a lot of chocolate notes, and even the cold sour, I'm like, uh, I get, like, the wet, raw potato, and all of these things are leaning to fall for me. Mm, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, there's even a little bit of a dry oak leaf. There's which, the, yeah, I yeah, just which up, is actually the barrel up. aging. This is going to sound funny. I find it there. I find, and it's not even in it, but I find it to be very fruity. Oh yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, well, I mean, you know, there's a, a a portion of wild yeast in there, and the wild yeast always leans to the fruit because it always comes off of whatever orchard is nearby. You know, and in traditionally like, yeah. speaking, there's always a brewery next to an orchard for that reason. I get almost like a almost like a grape jelly kind of taste yeah. out of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. a grape jelly. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, jam, a jam flavor. So, and again, you know, I get a little malt on the nose, but no malt on the flavor. No, no, I'm no malt at all yeah. on the flavor, uh, yeah, but there's a little bit on the nose, and um, it, it almost has like a champagneish mm. body to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. What were you going to say? Well, I didn't mean that. Uh, I didn't mean that the the sours would replace spring beers. Uh, how I meant it, and I understand why you meant that, or why you would think that. What I meant was maybe they ought to just give up trying to find out find spring beers and just work on the sours, because they they, they can't get the spring beers right. So, just just work on the sours. <laughs> Leave skip from spring. <laughs> But I, I agree with you. This is more of a fall, more of a fall, even though it's lighter because I think it has the oak, it has the sour, it has a cider type quality, a champagne yeah, type yeah, quality. Sure, champagne sure. type so quality. that all, all all of that uh, reminds me reminds me of fall. So I didn't really mean to replace did, did, spring beer. Did anybody else get any kind of like uh, chocolate or vanilla off of this? No, no chocolate. No, I didn't get chocolate or okay. vanilla. All right, that's just Not me. At all. Did anybody get any wet potato? Like the no. scent of a fresh cut raw potato. No. In the in the in the in the bouquet. Yeah. I I could see where where you could say it was, but in more the flavor, oak in I'm the not bu- getting it in the flavor. More oak yeah. on the bouquet yeah. for yeah. me. Yeah, 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 definitely some oak on the bouquet. Yeah. It has that musky. Yeah. Which which a potato has. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. a similarity. Yeah. I could perhaps get the chocolate like later as as I'm contemplating the back, you know the the, the taste on the back of my tongue. It's like a little. I know. Stop. <laughs> I know, it's just. Uh-huh. You know, if I pay attention, like, but you know, with sour, I don't get so much. It, the, the the sweet. I'm getting mostly fruit, personally. You know. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, the, the, again, there's like there's like a weird citrus kind of like a residual grapefruit. Yeah. Smashed in there with like some sort of like peachy grape, kind of appley thing whatever yeah touch of honey i, I, so this I is think Monk's cafe one one of our guests that we're going to have on the show should be like a tongueologist a tongueologist uh, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so they can I am explain not that with a 10 foot pole <laughs> so they yeah, can explain that, why uh, you're getting that tang that uh, that uh, bite on the, the the sides of your tongue uh, of course, we could probably have a chart out here of where you taste sweet and sour and all that. But I thought a tongueologist would D- be. David, I'd, I'd, I'd love, love to see Chinese you pointing pointing with a laser pointing, pointing to <laughs> laser pointer pointing to a chart <laughs> on the different parts of a human tongue. Hi, this is Dave Senior. You're listening to Key West Beer Tales, the sum of all beers. Are we ready to move on to the next? No, beer? because we, we still need have two more of these to right? drink. We need to do pairings or something. Are we going to do pairings? Um, yeah, do let's pairings? do pairings next. And uh, give me two seconds to talk amongst yourselves. Well, I, I, I think uh, mm-hmm. the uh, ABV there, uh, Chris. Uh, 
That's a good point to talk yeah. about. Yeah, it's no, five, I, yeah. ABV is five point five, I believe. Five point five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's an it's it's actually a nice light beer at five point yeah. five. Mm-hmm. Absolutely doesn't yeah. uh, doesn't it's blow really you away at all. Beer yeah, at it's all. really nice. Um, pairings, boy, I'm 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 blown out of the water on these on cigar pairings. Yeah, and on what food would you pairings. do? Yeah. I'm I'm lost. I. I'm just, it's, it's just a you drinking know, beer for me. For me, I'm, I'm thinking I can see myself sitting like at a roadside cafe in a small Belgian town, just sitting on the side, watching the traffic and the people walk by drinking the beer on a beautiful day. I Maybe having a pipe, who knows? I got that picture. Yeah. Good I'm job, not seeing Chris. pairing. I'm not seeing a pairing at all. Yes, that's that's so, not myself you know, either. Some, sometimes, sometimes beers have pairings and sometimes they don't. <laughs> what, um... Uh, what um, no, right, right. other than uh, you know <laughs> the answer that's going to come out is Belgian waffles? But what is what is the what is a Belgian snack food? Is there a Belgian snack food? What is well, a there's Belgian, Belgian chocolate? Pickle, pickled fish. Ah, oh, the pickled fish. I love I, pickled fish. I think I think I'm I'm just imagining this because thank you. I, I'm just pulling this out of the air. I'm thinking that it's somewhere between Holland food and French food. And okay. like hearty French food. So, so maybe maybe there's a baguette on the table, yeah, if if anything. Go. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. And fruit de mer. Maybe some. Um, I'm going to ask Mark what kind of cheese he would pair it with, and one word, just what kind of cheese, because he comes up with a specific cheese every week, and I want to uh, see. You know, honestly, this is very cheese so, specific. So this this. <laughs> he's, he's motoring in. So um, I, I actually wouldn't pair this with cheese. No. Um, okay. And hey, first. I didn't ask him if he was going to pair it with cheese. I said, pair it with cheese. Yeah. This go. is an order, <laughs> man. <laughs> You're not the boss of me. <laughs> not even a Gouda, like a hard Gouda. <laughs> okay. So if, if if you won't do it, would no you like way. a cup? I will. Of, would you like a cup of shut up? Chevra. Hey, Zip he, it good. Oh, he said he'd do it. Oh, he's going to do it. All right, I'm like all right. It. It's time for Mark to go. All right. Do so, his thing. So honestly, my pairing with this would be uh, mussels. And uh, my muscle cheese, muscle I've never cheese. had that. No mussels, uh, but uh, my pairing with this would be mussels, and the the cheese I would do with the mussels in this beer uh, would be parmesan. Actually, oh, parmesan. parmesan. Okay. Interesting. So, so uh, you know, like a really good aged, hard, oily, crumbly parmesan. Not like a shaved parmesan, but like not a like Jarlsberg. No, 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 not like a. <laughs> oh wait, that's a Swiss. Yes. Sorry, Actually, it's, thinking. It must be the Benadryl yeah. talking. Yeah. yeah, Parmesan. I love Parmesan. Yeah, it's like you know, a good, a good Parmesan cheese, but like a really good one. Really um, good Parmesan. And, and some mussels, um, in like a white wine sauce. You wouldn't um, actually cook the mussels in the beer. No, no, no. That'd be a little too much. It would be a little bit too much. But I would pair it with the white wine sauce with this beer. Um, and you could even do pasta with it or mm-hmm. uh, just do, like, some sort of really great kind of, like, a um, uh, a French whole wheat or even a white baguette. Mm-hmm. Um, and just kind of, like, dab it in there and then chase it with this beer. I'm like, it, I, I, I honestly, like, I'm so hungry right now. So it would be all a very this. mild, uh, the mild dish to go with the sour beer, Well, really. I mean, like... Uh, w- like something w- with w- not w- too much, like, intense flavor. A very sharp... Parmesan, yeah. uh, so like it, it would actually be like actually very intense and very salty. See, I'm thinking if I was going to pair a cheese with this myself, I'd go with a chevre, mm. a goat cheese. Yeah, I'd like a yeah, pair. Yeah, yeah. Pair I mean, like I, I would do that too. Yeah. I mean, I would I wouldn't say that would be terrible. No. But uh, um, you know, and and then you know, for me, some green onion or uh, chive on that. Um, oh, that'd be good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I love the, chives. The, yeah, yep. Uh, so for for goat cheeses and stuff like that, I always kind of like I need a sharper flavor to follow mm. it. You know, it's mm. like, um, and and then that to me it would be very good. Also, you know, like a New England clam chowder. Ah, uh, that'd be nice. I could see so seafood, like well, yeah, the, the, some seafood. The, the clam chowder, which do, that doesn't appeal to me for this beer because this beer is so effervescent, and the clam chowder is extremely. The opposite, creamy and yeah. Yeah. milky. Well, so you're, for you're me, pairings are them. like opposites. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or, yeah. or or uh, complementary. Yeah, like complementary. Okay. Yeah. So you know, like uh, in a very 
N never mind. I'm going to end that thought right there. Okay.